This is an Atwater Kent 10 breadboard. It was manufactured in 1923. And I want to point out a few things before I get into the video. Let's start all the way to the left here. This is an antenna switch and also the antenna coil. And you can clearly see that on the radio. And it, it is in a tank circuit. Here's the capacitor. And you can see the capacitor on the breadboard. And we have three tank circuits. Now these tank circuits are not high Q because it has to cover the entire AM band. That's why we have three tank circuits. So you tune the first one, then the second, and then the third, and you pretty much eliminate the unwanted signals. But it does make it harder to tune. You'll see that in the video. Some other things that I want to point out is this right here is the left rheostat. And if you look at the wiring diagram, it controls the filament voltage for the first two tubes, the RF tubes, radio frequency. On the right, we have another rheostat, and it controls the filament for the last three tubes, the detector tube and two audio amplifiers. And that's the three tube island that's on the right. And there's a lot of stuff in that besides the three tubes on top. The two transformers are in that also. Here's the setup that I'm going to use in the video. I've got my horn speaker hooked up to the radio and the power supply is on the left and we're going to dial in a couple of local stations. Here's my Atwater Kent number 10 breadboard. It was manufactured in 1923, so it is a hundred years old. I've got the antenna hooked up, a few alligator clips. I don't have a ground on it, which would make it perform better, but uh, it still works. So I'm going to apply power. This is the switch right here. It's on right now. I'm going to turn the power on. And uh, here's the rheostat on the left, and it's varying the filament voltage, and this is the rheostat on the right. Okay. Okay, now, to tune this thing, it's kind of tricky. Okay. I can pick up another station here during the day, another local station. Let's see if we can't find it. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. I should have wrote down the settings, and of course you would. Let's see. Oh, I hear something. 
There we go. Okay. Now, of course, you would write down these settings. And they're all approximately the same. And uh, time of day, and of course, the station that you picked up. Here's the antenna switch. Yeah. Put it in the center. Again, this is the rheostat. Okay, first tank circuit, second tank circuit, and the third one. Now, I wonder if I can get back to the other station. Well, let's see. Barely hear something. Doesn't help when they stop talking when you're trying to tune the radio. Okay. There we go. There we are. Really, a nice 100-year-old radio. There we go. take a closer look at the wiring diagram on the right bottom right are the connections and I've got everything labeled all the battery connections and uh, this part is missing on the writer's drawing that's something you just have to get used to 1920s radios but this is what I used in the video, hooked up to my battery eliminator. And this is what the connections look like. Now here's the first tank circuit. And we have an antenna and a ground. And this is the actual signal from the radio station. This signal goes over to the grid of the first tube and gets amplified and is sent to the primary of the first RF transformer and it, of course it is magnetically coupled but look at this transformer it is a step up transformer so we're getting um, a little boost there also and we have another tank circuit on the secondary 
and that gets sent over to the grid again of the second tube and amplified. Now we're in the detector. The signal coming from the secondary of that RF transformer goes through the capacitor and we would expect uh, about the same thing on both sides but not in this circuit. This is uh, the grid's pretty high impedance here. 2.4 meg resistor and uh, of course that capacitor is very high impedance so the RF goes through that capacitor and because of the high impedance that we have in this circuit the filament and grid act like a diode and that's how the signal gets cut in half and of course that gets amplified and sent over to the next primary this primary is an audio transformer and it pretty well blocks all RF and that would be at the plate which is the bottom connection but you have to get rid of that otherwise it causes distortion and how we get rid of that RF is with this capacitor right here this is a RF bypass capacitor now the signal is amplified two more times and when we get to the speaker connections and I've got a horn on this radio it now has enough energy to drive my horn speaker thanks for watching and taking a look at my Atwater Kent 10 breadboard 1923.